Okay, thank, thank you very much, Dave. This guy's going to turn this up a little, and um, we'll get going. Once again, I want to welcome everyone. Uh, again, my name is Vinny Fischer. I'm with the New Jersey Fire Sprinkler Advisory Board. Uh, it is the goal of the advisory board to educate the public about fire sprinklers and the effectiveness of fire sprinklers in protecting lives and property from fires. The demonstration that you see right behind you is one that we have done uh, one time before. Uh, it's what we call our side-by-side -side, uh, room burn demonstration. The, uh, the two rooms that you see constructed behind me are identical in all uh, manner. They're furnished the same. Um, the only difference is, is that the room on the left, uh, actually the room on the right, uh, has a fire sprinkler installed inside of it. We have now lit a fire inside the other room, and as you hear, a smoke detector going off. Okay, the, um, the fire has been burning. We have it, uh, a stopwatch right now, uh, timing the event, and uh, our firefighter here is measuring the temperature inside the room. Um, what temperature you got there? Okay, so that room went from probably around 70 degrees, which is ambient temperature today roughly, to 150 degrees in less than a minute. Um, fires can occur uh, at any time. Uh, statistics show that most fires occur in the middle of the night when occupants are sleeping. Um, these rooms are set up to simulate a typical bedroom. Uh, that bedroom could be in a private residence. Uh, it could be a college dorm room. Sort of could be a hotel room. Um, or it could be in a high-rise building. So as you can see, the fire is uh, continuing unchecked. How long have we been going, Ray? Going about a minute and 30 seconds. So a minute and 30 seconds, and as you can see, the flames are now spread up the wall. Dave, what, what's our temperature? Now we're up over 200 degrees. The bed is fully involved. This is under two minutes, folks. Now that smoke detector went off. Uh, if it's a battery-operated smoke detector, someone will have to call the fire department. If it's hardwired to a central station, the fire department has been uh, alerted. Wow. It's over 500 degrees, folks. Ray, the time? Two minutes. Two minutes. So that room went from 70 to over 500 in two minutes. Now it's over 800. Right now, what is occurring? In about a moment, is a phenomenon known as flashover. Flashover occurs, the temperature in the room grows to a point where everything in the room bursts into flame at once, and here we have flashover. Ray, the time. Two and a half minutes, we went from we went from 70 degrees to how, what's our temperature now? Over 2,000 degrees. Now we're going to ask our firefighter friends to go in there and to knock that fire down. Folks, that was under three minutes. There was no accelerants used. Those were typical contents that you would find in a, in, a, in a very small bedroom. There's a TV, a bed, a rug, a desk, a chair, a computer. And as we see just how fast this fire occurred. Now, we're only three minutes into this, and, it's in a, and if this had been an actual fire, depending on how fast it was reported, the fire department could take anywhere from two and a half to five minutes to even arrive at the scene. So this room would have reached flashover practically before the fire department ever got there. So we're going to allow our, our friends in the uh, our firefighters here a moment to, uh, to douse the flames, make sure everything's out. So as you see, the fire spread very, very quickly. Again, had this been a, a home or an apartment building or a dorm room, the results could have been catastrophic. Now hopefully, when the smoke alarm went off, it woke up whoever was in the room and that person got out because as you see, there's no way that anyone could have survived that inferno. Um,
smoke alarms are a very, very important life-saving measure. Uh, they've saved a lot of lives. Unfortunately, uh, statistics show that 40% of the uh, residences in the United States do not have a working firearm system. Um, okay, thank you guys. All right, so that was the one room. Now what we're going to do is we're going to light a small fire, same thing, in a trash can, a discarded cigarette, could be an overloaded uh, extension cord, could be a misplaced space heater. Um, most fires also, uh, at the time of the year that most fires occur are in the winter time, between space heaters and fireplaces. Uh, we see a lot of residential fires. So now, like I said, same thing with a, like a small fire in a trash can. The trash can just has some uh, newspaper in it. And we're gonna hopefully see the difference. Uh, getting back to uh, smoke detectors, 40% um, of homes do not have working smoke detectors. Uh, smoking t smoke detectors are extremely important to alert the people to the presence of a fire. But the limitations of a smoke detector is that that's all they can do. They can only tell you that there's a fire. They can't do anything about it. Okay, so now we see the trash can is lit up. We hear our uh, smoke detector going off. Again, hopefully alerting the people that there's a fire inside. Um, we have the curtain there, our nice uh, Martha Stewart curtains. Are now going up. Ray, you got the time on us? 45 seconds. 45 seconds in. 45 seconds in, folks, we have a fire sprinkler activated. Water is now being put on the fire at the rate of 15 to 25 gallons per minute. And as you can see, the results are quite different. We do have a, a smoke condition, but we, need, we don't see any more flame. The temperature in the room, Dave, were we able to measure that? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. The fire sprinkler system was, uh, the fire sprinkler head was set to go up at 155 degrees. So once the temperature reached that level, um, the sprinkler head opened, water came out. It is this quick activation of the sprinkler head that makes them so effective. Fire sprinklers are installed and will and are in, in, installed in buildings and will sit there year after year after year until they reach their preset temperature. The myth that we have, yeah. Gentlemen, we have a little bit of flare up on the, on the first unit. They're on, they're on top of that. Um, fire sprinklers, like I said, um, the, the one big myth that we try to uh, tell people about fire sprinklers that unlike what you see in the movies, when one sprinkler head goes off, they all don't go off. That is not a, uh, what you see in, in, in actual uh, installations. Only the sprinkler head that's closest to the flames uh, will go off. So as we can see, folks, that was one sprinkler head. The first room was completely destroyed. Matter of fact, they have to go and put more water on it because the fire has now gotten up above the, uh, the unit. So there is some more fire there. In the meantime, our sprinkler room on the right-hand side, uh, the fire is all but extinguished. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we're all set. The firemen are just going to go in now and just make sure that that fire is out. Um, but again, folks, as you can see, the, the dramatic contrast between the two rooms. The only difference between these two rooms was a single sprinkler head. The single sprinkler head made all the difference. Now where the other room burned out. Okay.